Today, we're discussing OpenAI's big API announcements from yesterday and why they reflect a more fundamental change in the AI space. In short, we're moving from the era of novelty to the era of real utility. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Today, we are talking about OpenAI's big API announcement from yesterday. And while nominally this was focused on developers, I actually think it's reflective of a much broader change. Professor Ethan Mollick tweeted yesterday, It's important to remember that AI is advancing very quickly, and you shouldn't mistake current capabilities for the ones LLMs will have in months, like today. OpenAI just released a much faster, cheaper version of GPT and a better way for the AI to work with other systems. So what we're going to do today is go through that announcement and specifically talk about why it matters not just for developers, but also for end users. The announcement post was called Function Calling and Other API Updates. And just from that title, you get a sense of where the emphasis is. However, before we get into function calling, which is undoubtedly the biggest piece of this, let's talk about some of the other updates as well. The company writes, We released GPT 3.5 Turbo and GPT 4 earlier this year. And in only a few short months, we've seen incredible applications built by developers on top of these models. Today, we're following up with some exciting updates. Now, as I mentioned, we're about to talk about function calling in some detail, but the other updates they announced include, one, a much longer context window for GPT 3.5 Turbo. Now, longer context windows are something we've talked a lot about on this show. Context window refers to how many tokens or how much text or information an LLM can ingest in one fell swoop. The longer the context window then, the longer a piece of information that it can ingest. So for example, instead of breaking a book into chapters, you could just feed the entire book in at once, depending on how big that context window was. Obviously then there are benefits in the context with which the LLM can interact with that piece of information. Right now, the context window for a user inputting information on ChatGPT is 8,000 tokens, which means four to 5,000 words on average. Now, that's a lot, but that's not a ton. There are even some major magazine articles that are longer than that, right? Now, throughout much of this year, the big conversation has been around a 32K context window for GPT-4. However, we've heard that one of the reasons that OpenAI hasn't been able to push forward with that 32K context window is just that they're dealing with the same thing that everyone else is dealing with, which is a shortage of computing power. In meetings with developers as part of his world tour, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman said basically that, while the technology might be there, the GPUs just aren't. Now, when it comes to GPT 3.5 Turbo the developers were using, they only had a standard 4K context window. It was big news then yesterday when they announced a 16,000 context version of GPT 3.5 Turbo. That's obviously four times longer. That means it can accommodate about 20 pages of text in a single request. Now, on top of that, they're also reducing their pricing. OpenAI's most popular embeddings model is having its cost reduced by 75% to 0.0001 per 1,000 tokens, and the cost of GPT 3.5 Turbo's input tokens is going down by 25%. OpenAI writes, Developers can now use this model for just 0.0015 per 1,000 input tokens and 0.002 per 1,000 output tokens, which equates to roughly 700 pages per dollar. GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K is priced at exactly double that. So if the announcement were just that, it would probably be enough to get developers really excited. But that was far from the only part of the announcement. In fact, the main part of the announcement was what they call function calling. OpenAI writes, Developers can now describe functions to GPT-4 and GPT 3.5 Turbo and have the model intelligently choose to output a JSON object containing arguments to call those functions. This is a new way to more reliably connect GPT's capabilities with external tools and APIs. These models have been fine-tuned to both detect when a function needs to be called depending on the user's input, and to respond with JSON that adheres to the function signature. Function calling allows developers to more reliably get structured data back from the model. So if you are not a developer, that could sound like Latin. Here's maybe a simplified way to think about this. When people are interfacing with LLMs, they're interfacing via natural language. They're saying things like, what is the weather in New York right now? However, when computers talk to each other, they don't speak in natural language. They speak in structured data. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's a lightweight data exchange format that's used primarily to help data move between a server and a web application. So for example, a JSON object that represents a person's information might be organized into a nested structure such as name, age, hobbies, profession, or address, which might then underneath address have a number of subfields, including street, city, or country. JSON is language independent, which means it can be used with various programming languages. 
So a simple way to think about function calling in the context of OpenAI or GPT is that it allows developers to automatically translate natural language inputs from users into functions that can query external APIs or sources of data in the structured language that computers speak. Those external sources of data or APIs can then send back the relevant information, and then the AI can interpret the structured results and turn it back into natural language for its answer. Developer Alex Volkov writes, you know how many folks struggle to get a JSON output consistently for the use of agents and other stuff? Well, OpenAI took it one step further and gave us function calls. Alex points out, first of all, that this is something the developers have had to develop complicated workarounds for. Alex writes, OpenAI said, why not just provide our API with your function and what it needs to get as arguments, and the model will return the right function call. He concludes, running to try this out seems like a major shift in the developer experience for these models, and we essentially are getting the benefits of the plugin ecosystem into the API calls. This is an analogy I've heard kind of a lot. Basically, what plugins do for ChatGPT is they allow the user to point to specific sources of information in order to get ChatGPT to contextualize whatever the request is, whether it's a summarization or something else, in the context of that source of data. This means you can do things like pull in basketball information, as with basketball stats, or magic card information, as with magic codex, MLS information, as with Zillow, or stock market or crypto data, as with a ton of different plugins that have been released. Now, some of these are just really novelty. For example, the creature generator for role-playing games. Yesterday, it generated something called a Frost Reaver for me, which is apparently a fearsome creature that inhabits icy tundras, and which has 20 strength, 10 dexterity, 18 constitution, 4 intelligence, 12 wisdom, and 6 charisma. Some of them are trying to be useful. For example, Instacart. I wrote, could you suggest a paleo meal plan for a family of four for one week? It gave me that and then asked if it wanted me to generate a shopping list with these meals using the Instacart plugin, from which I can click and then go to Instacart. Now, in this one, I say trying to be useful because one of the big open questions is the extent to which most of these plugin creators actually want their experience to be in ChatGPT or they want ChatGPT to be in their app. That's the way that Sam Altman has put it. And then there are some that are just dead on useful now. And what I've found is most common to those is that they are simply the plugins that point to very specific pieces of information. The one that I use most often because of this podcast is X Papers, which allows ChatGPT to access all of the research on Archive. So if that's how the external facing consumer experience of ChatGPT is evolving, in other words, plugins giving us the ability to point ChatGPT to specific information sources, function calling is effectively that for developers. So the examples that they give of what developers can do with this include creating chatbots that answer question by calling external tools, such as ChatGPT plugins. For example, they write converting queries such as email Anya to see if she wants to get coffee next Friday to a function that is actually sending that email or asking what's the weather in Boston to a function that goes and pulls the current weather from some particular API source. Another is converting natural language into API calls or database queries. So think businesses that have put proprietary information in the form of charts or spreadsheets or customer data into ChatGPT. This would allow for things like converting who are my top 10 customers this month to an internal API call such as get customers by revenue. Finally, they suggest this could extract structured data from text. The example they gave is defining a function called extract people data to extract all the people mentioned in a particular Wikipedia article. So to drill down even more, they use that example of what's the weather like in Boston right now. Step one is that OpenAI's API would recognize the function that was trying to be called by the user's input. Step two is that it would structure that data and send it to the third-party API. And then step three is that OpenAI's API would get the response back and then summarize it once again in natural language. So what does this mean for end users, for those of us who are not developers? What it means is that the developers who are building on the OpenAI API and using GPT for their applications now have a much more powerful and native tool to actually build things that are useful for us, that have specific functionality, that are less likely to hallucinate because they're being pointed to specific information in structured ways, even though they're returning to us information in the natural language that makes this tool so appealing and human feeling. When most people experience ChatGPT for the first time, they asked it to write a poem about cats or summarize some history like it was a Taylor Swift song. Yes, I'm speaking from personal experience there. Those things are novel, they show off the capacity of the tool, but it's different than it being actually useful. Now, of course, legions of people have come together to start creating content about how to use ChatGPT in ways that are much more effective. And of course, people all over the world are using ChatGPT for their businesses or their hobbies. So it's not to suggest that there isn't utility already. 
But when it comes to what people are building on this, I think this represents a major shift in the capacity of the development tools to move from novelty to utility and really powerful utility in ways that I expect to produce an incredible new wave of applications. Now, interestingly, this comes exactly at the same time as some people are starting to say, maybe we've been a little overhyped about generative AI and what ChatGPT can do. My guess is that this answers some of that skepticism in a pretty convincing way in pretty short order. So again, we return to the Ethan Mollick tweet from whence we started. It is important to remember that AI is advancing very quickly, and you shouldn't mistake current capabilities for the ones LLMs will have in months. That's it for today's AI breakdown. Hopefully this was useful. Hopefully this got you excited about what OpenAI's new API updates might mean. If you're enjoying the content, please like, subscribe, and share it. Click the notification button to not miss any episodes. Subscribe to the podcast and the newsletter version. You can find all of that information on breakdown.network. I appreciate you listening or watching, and until next time, peace.